Smiley from the Energy Boutique with your energy forecast for Saturday, September 21st. Okay, we are in for a major energy day. Reason being, today is the very last day of Virgo season. This is a very interesting time to really appreciate the analytical, practical, logical part of what this Virgo season was supposed to be teaching us. And again, a lot of this Virgo energy was focusing in on the problems in order to fix them, heal them, repair them, make some kind of adjustment to improve our overall physical lives. We are also entering into the equinox energy. We've been in it. We're still in the eclipse energy. Now, the equinox energy is definitely more dominant, I would say, than the eclipse energy at this particular point in time. Of course, the equinox energy gets triggered here on the 22nd when the sun moves into Libra season and, of course, triggers that equinox point where there is equal day to equal night. And therefore, there is a rebalancing, if you will, of those karmic scales. This is also going to be the last day that Venus, the goddess of love, beauty, worth, pleasure, and money, will be in her rulership in Libra energy. Very interesting dynamic. We do have Venus leaving her rulership, moving into Scorpio energy just as Libra season begins. So that is definitely going to be an interesting dynamic as well. We have a lot of planets nearing their final degrees, and that always puts the squeeze on us, always intensifies all of the topics and themes that we've been kind of struggling to wrap up. So there is going to be major intensities here today. Of course, the moon still very much in this Taurus energy that is very much working in our favor, allowing us to be grounded anchored into the present moment, very aware of our physical form, physical circumstances. We definitely want to be focusing in on the smaller details that make us feel a little bit safer, more secure, a little bit more comfortable, if you will. Again, the moon in Taurus energy doesn't really like to think that far into the future, doesn't like to think that far in the past. We're definitely focused on this present moment, trying to make the best of it, trying to really wrap our head around where some adjustments in our present moment could be made to, again, kind of reassure us, encourage us, and really intensify the comfort the familiarity, the stability, the security that many of us have been lacking. So with all of that being said, there are 12 different aspects popping off here today. Eight of them are going to involve the moon. The moon in Taurus energy going to semi-square Neptune, who of course is retrograde in his rulership in Pisces energy. Now, this is definitely going to be, I'm going to say, an illumination on where it is that we're having a hard time kind of grasping where it is that change needs to be had, where it is that a major transformation really is taking place. Again, that moon in Taurus really doesn't want to think too far into the future, wants to really rely on the logical practical mind space, if you will. And Neptune is all about dreams, all about creativity, all about our intuition, all about the vision that we have for the future. And so again, when we allow ourselves to kind of dabble into what could be, we get so overwhelmed that we kind of check out. And this is definitely a point where we're starting to realize the to-do list that would come with making some of the adjustments and changes that we know that we need to make. And we're just overwhelmed, not prepared to do those said things. And therefore, we are kind of looking to escape in our mind space, in our heart space, in our physical realm, escape, realizing where it is that we're on the cusp of major change. The moon is then going to make an awkward interaction with the sun. The sun, of course, in this Virgo energy nearing those final degrees. This is earth on earth action. And any time that the moon and the sun come together, there's always going to be an aha moment, an epiphany of what we truly want, what we need, what we desire, what it is that we have to do to get it. So again, the earth energy having us very anchored into the physical form, into the present moment. We're very aware of what looks good, what feels good 
and what does not. The sun in the Virgo energy still analyzing where we have room for improvement, where it is that we could do things better, where we could do things a little bit more efficient, if you will, and where it is that we have to kind of realize that we need a better system, better routine in our lives so that we can actually be taking better care of ourselves. Mercury, ruler of the mental plane, ruler of information, communication, and how we express ourselves. He's in Virgo energy. That's his rulership. So there's definitely a lot going on in our headspace. Mercury is going to get into the boxing ring square off with Jupiter, the planet of growth, expansion, beliefs, abundance, and blessings, who happens to be in the Gemini energy. Interestingly enough, Mercury rules over Virgo energy and Gemini energy. A square illuminates where it is that we're going through some growing pains. Now, let me just say that Jupiter tends to magnify whatever's going on and where Mercury's involved, there's going to be a lot of pressure in the headspace. We have a lot of ideas. We actually have too many ideas, too many options for us to actually be thinking about. And because Jupiter tends to bring a little bit of optimism, but the Virgo energy that Mercury is currently in is highly critical and highly judgmental. There's a lot of caution there. We don't want to be too optimistic, too confident. And we could definitely be over committing ourselves to some of these great grand ideas that are lacking structure lacking those details. And while we're trying to sort through our thought process, it's almost as if we are analyzing too much that comes from the Virgo energy. And we're also kind of faking optimism, we're faking our confidence at this particular point. And faking it till you make it is probably the most toxic thing that you could do to try and be positive, although sometimes it works. But under this influence, just feels like we're going out of our way to kind of delude ourselves. We are still under eclipse energy, uh, kind of delude ourselves, if you will, of thinking that everything is OK. Everything is peachy keen when realistically we know damn well that it is not. The moon in Taurus energy then going to sextile beautiful interaction with Saturn, the Lord of Karma, who is retrograde in Pisces energy. He rules over systems and structures, foundations, willpower and discipline. And of course, we're doing a major purge, major reconstruction of our belief system, of our goals, our visions, our dreams in this Pisces energy. But we love Taurus and Pisces energy working together because whatever it is in our creative mind, in our imaginary mind, in our mind's eye, whatever vision, whatever idea actually sparks our mind, body and soul with excitement or inspiration, we're able to bring it to life through Taurus energy. So emotionally speaking, we're starting to figure out again, with all of the ideas popping off in our mental plane, which ones are actually feeling good, what we're resonating with what we actually believe we can obtain or achieve what is actually possible. And so now we're starting to kind of think about the framework the system, the routine, the foundation that we have to build in our physical lives where routines, relationships, uh, maybe a strategic plan of information, of research, where it has to be put into play in order for us to actually start seeing, um, I'm going to call it baby steps of being able to actually initiate something new. Now, keep in mind, we're in a completion phase. There's not a whole lot new going on. The new that is coming online, very small increments. And again, we're still in eclipse season. So what we believe to be true, what we think we know still isn't quite it. We're being eclipsed from the truth, eclipsed from the plan, eclipsed from the details at this particular juncture. But whatever it is that we're kind of, you know, arriving at, whatever epiphany we're having, whatever we kind of see in our mind's eye that is possible, is achievable, we're definitely going to anchor that energy in because that's what the moon in Taurus does. We're going to definitely start thinking about the different options and opportunities to take a step forward, even if it's a baby step. They count. The moon is going to make a positive interaction with Jupiter. So we're feeling a little bit optimistic. We're feeling a little bit confident. We are, I'm going to say, grounded, stabilized in our emotions enough to actually explore the different options and opportunities that we're debating between at this particular juncture without the pressure, without the overwhelming intensity to actually have to pull the trigger and actually commit to certain avenue, path and direction. 
This is going to make us feel a little bit more hopeful, a little bit more wishful for the things to come. We are definitely plucking out the silver linings, if you will, and starting to really kind of hype ourselves up to what could be, of course, when we feel ready and prepared to take action, which side note is not today. The moon is going to semi-square, creating a little bit of tension and conflict with that north node in Aries energy. And so basically what we're getting here is a block because just when we're thinking that we're confident enough and optimistic enough and pushing the boundaries of our comfort zone in our inner realm of thinking about the options and opportunities to take a step forward, suddenly things get overwhelming. We don't want to go any further. We're starting to realize all of the responsibilities that would weigh on our shoulders to make the changes that we know that we need to make that we're not prepared to do right now. So what happens is we kind of get into a roadblock. We don't want to think that far into the future. We don't want to think about all of the opportunities for us to grow and heal and evolve because that requires us to do a lot of, let's call it dirty work, releasing, eliminating, cutting off, if you will, that we're emotionally not prepared to do as of yet. The moon is then going to trine, beautiful interaction, with Mercury. So we have Earth on Earth energies. We have our heart space, which is the moon. We have Mercury, which is our head space. They're on the same page. They're on not only the same book, not only same chapter, but literally on the same page, probably on the same line. What does that mean? Well, emotionally speaking, Taurus energy, we're plucking out the silver linings. We're identifying what looks good, what feels good, what we want more of. The mercurial energy with Virgo, of course, is picking apart the finer details of how we are wanting to build and create more of the things that we're identifying are actually working for us, actually making us feel good, actually making us feel not as scared for some of the changes, the transformations, the adjustments to come. And so if you find yourself in a situation where we're, you know, talking about future plans or we're talking about how we're thinking or feeling, we're definitely going to take more of a logical, practical approach. There's not a whole lot of emotion kind of being factored into those particular conversations. But nonetheless, we are definitely focused on where it is in the present moment that things are going well, things are going good. We are very aware of the things that don't feel so good, that aren't going so fluidly, let's say. But at the same time, we are more consumed with focusing in on the positive than we are focused on the negative. Venus, the goddess of love, beauty, worth, pleasure, and money, again, still in her rulership, but nearing the final degrees, Venus is going to be making a very harsh interaction with Neptune, who is retrograde in Pisces energy. So first of all, we're getting caught up in our heart space. That's what Venus is all about. She really illuminates for us where our heart needs to make a major change, needs to pivot, if you will. We are thinking about relationship dynamics. We're also thinking about our financial situation. We're also thinking about our physical realm, where it is that the scales are out of whack, where there's been some craziness, some chaos, where it is that we want to restore that particular energy to peace, to harmony, to balance. What happens is, though, is we lose ourselves in fantasy land, in imaginary land. That is the Pisces energy. Again, we're a little bit Delulu, which is not always the Salulu. We want to focus on balancing reality, what actually is, versus the fantasy of what could be. If we're too much in reality, that's going to lead to depression. If we're too much into fantasy, that's going to lead to delusion. And ultimately, we need to strike a balance. We have to understand that we have to deal with life as it is, not for the way that we wish it would be. But we also have to understand that in order to actually get out of our current circumstances, there is an element of fantasy. There is an element of imagination that needs to be had. If we were only leaning upon our physical reality, the information, the details of our physical reality, that would make us feel very trapped. So there is this aspect, this element where we do have to fantasize, but we don't want to go so far into the fantasy that we lose touch with reality. Now, here's the thing. We're going to have to dabble in a lot of fears, a lot of insecurities, especially when it comes to our relationship dynamics. There's a lot of indecision 
with this Libra energy. And because we're on the fence about a lot, especially because we're in eclipse season, still lacking the information, the details we need to make an informed decision, because we are moving into this equinox energy that Typically speaking, if we weren't in eclipse season, we would definitely be feeling that lighter, more balanced type of vibe. We are going to be really confused, really kind of, you know, flip floppy in this particular energy for quite some time. So again, we have to kind of bring up our discontentment where certain relationship dynamics are concerned or discontent in our present day, our day-to-day -day life or day-to-day -day routine or with our financial situation. We have to be illuminated to where it is that we're not happy a little bit where we're uncomfortable. Again, we're not at the point where we're willing to kind of poke the bear and rock the boat about it. We do have to kind of mull over it a little bit. But again, we have to balance out how far we're willing to go into Lululand and how far we're willing to anchor ourselves into this current moment, into this current reality. The moon in Taurus energy, then going to make a positive interaction with Chiron, the wounded healer who is retrograde in Aries energy, helping us to anchor in this new version of self. This is a positive interaction and especially coming out of that, you know, not so nice interaction between Venus and Neptune. Um, we are starting to see where it is that, yeah, OK, we may have some issues. We may need to make some adjustments. We know that we eventually are going to have to kind of shit or get off the pot with making some of the changes and transformations that we know that we need to make. But emotionally speaking, we're actually feeling a little bit proud of ourselves because we're handling the confusion and delusion quite well. We're handling this new version of self with new wants, needs, and desires quite well. And we're also recognizing where it is that, again, we are slowly but surely distancing and detaching ourselves from the old mindset, the old ways of doing things, the old emotional disposition that, of course, had us in looping patterns and behaviors that we know are not good for us, doesn't allow us to grow, doesn't allow us to evolve. So now we're kind of open we're open minded and we're open at taking a good look at, again, giving ourselves a little bit of credit where credit is due. We're building in our self-confidence. We're building in our self-esteem. We are building in our self-love, self-respect. And we are finally starting to realize that we 100 percent believe that we deserve a lot of the things that we felt very unworthy of in the months, in the years gone by. Mercury, ruler of the mental plane, is going to make a positive interaction with Mars. Mars being the god of war, ruling over our physical energy, our drive, our passion, our desires, even our anger. He is not in the greatest place in Cancer energy. Again, a little bit on the defense, a little bit in the, you know, let's preserve and fight and defend and protect whatever it is that we've already built, whatever it is that we've already created, especially where our emotions are concerned, where our worth, our value is concerned. Mercury and Mars working together in a positive way, definitely showing us where it is that when we set our mind to something, we are able to back it with a particular action in order to make the adjustments, the changes, the transformations to further stabilize our emotional realm, our physical realm. Now, Mars being the god of war and being how we kind of aggress and assert ourselves to go after what it is that we want. We're starting to recognize because Mercury being in Virgo energy, we've had all of this time to identify the problems in order for us to fix them, heal them, repair them. We're starting to realize where it is that there are some things that we could do in our physical realm to further stabilize the craziness, the chaos, further stabilize our emotions, further kind of, I'm going to say, continue to protect ourselves, to protect our loved ones, to make ourselves feel a little bit more safe and secure. But the inspiration, the motivation, the determination in order to hold the line definitely coming in strong. The moon in Taurus energy, then going to semi-square Mars. So again, just as we're starting to feel good and hype ourselves up and get a little bit focused on what it is that we could do, what we could pursue in order to further stabilize in our physical realm. Emotionally speaking, again, Taurus energy, we don't like to think that far into the future. We sure as hell do not enjoy feeling the weight of the world on our shoulders 
and whatever it is that just transpired between Mercury and Mars, whatever ideas that we've had, wherever it is that we know that there are certain actions for us to take, we just get overwhelmed with that. We don't want to do it. We're pausing, we're retracting. And so this is where a lot of restlessness, a lot of frustration could definitely come in. This is where our stubbornness is actually working against us because of course, we are trying to block out the future, we're trying to block out the past, we just want to anchor into the present moment. And of course, Mars who's rearing to go who doesn't have a whole lot of opportunity to take action and make moves at this point. He's kind of I'm going to say festering this inner spark, this inner fire, this inner desire to make moves to move on. And of course, not in the stage of the game to do that. And emotionally speaking, in Taurus energy, we have no want, need or desire to do any of that either. Thus, a lot of energy bouncing around in the physical body that we definitely have to give a healthy outlet to have that energy kind of removed from the physical form before we feel like we're going to explode. The last thing that we have going on here today is Mercury, ruler of the mental plane, making a very harsh interaction with Chiron, the wounded healer. So, okay, first of all, it's going to be very hard to read people. OK, read intentions, read between the lines, read the actions. It's also kind of Mercury retrograde ish, if I do say so myself, because a lot of misunderstandings, miscalculations, misjudgments could definitely come out of this particular interaction. We are swimming in doubts. We are swimming in insecurities right now. We are definitely picking off some of the scabs that were healing very nicely, especially where this new version of self was concerned. Suddenly we're slipping back into the old mindset, the old mind frame. We are again, recognizing where it is that we are moving forward. There is a little bit of growth. There is a little bit of evolving, but Mercury being in the Virgo energy, Again, highly critical, super judgmental. We're beating ourselves up. We're picking ourselves apart. And that Chiron energy that exposes the wounds, we're definitely sitting very deeply in it. But we have a lot to learn from these not so nice thoughts, these not so nice feelings. And that is, again, where that egoic programming and conditioning still has quite a hold on us. And all we have to do is become aware of it in order for us to flip the script and definitely put ourselves in a better mindset, seeing ourselves exactly as we are, not for the way we once were. <laughs> <laughs>